and it's crunch time and we're up to the end of our construction project. Well, wait a minute, let me back up, qualify that. There is no such thing as an end to a construction project on a car like this, but we're getting it close enough we can take it to the car show. Everybody has looked at it says, I got way too much work to do and I'm not gonna make it. But the moral of this story is I got help, I got Tom's working on the upholstery, I got Mike the Greek has been around here driving me crazy. Um, other than that, we're doing really well. What we'll have left to do is put in the carpets and a lot of detail work. Then we'll just detail everything real nice, get it ready for the car show. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to put this radiator in in an hour. Uh, it took me four hours to put it in. Uh, after I got to working on it, I discovered that they had cut the top of the radiator support off and took out all these little wings that go on the side. So I had to make all this so it looked fairly good. Uh, but it, it, uh, it came together pretty well once we got going on it. Put a little aluminum in here to dress it up and make it look, look a little better. Cover up some of the ugly stock stuff. Uh, these are the actual uh, headlight rings that were on the car in 1960. These are 59 Chevy headlight assemblies. The headlights normally sit uh, vertical, horizontal, I'm sorry. And we had to make the back buckets so that they turned sideways so we could get the light going in the right direction. And uh, one side fit really well, but the other side didn't fit quite well when we discovered that they had modified the buckets to make them fit. So we had to modify that to make that fit. So we've got this part pretty well done. We've got to polish the pan. Front bumper went on perfectly. I was so surprised. Uh, I thought the brackets would be all bent into Jesus, but they weren't. So the bumper fit real well. Peggy Sue helped me put that on. Uh, and so what we've got here is we've just got a couple of little pieces of rubber trim to go, some to go on the hood, little rubber stoppers to keep things from banging around. Uh, I'm changing, I'm putting new oil in it right now as we speak, transmission fluid. Then I'll discover how many leaks we have. Uh, I've got all the exhaust done. Uh, there again, that was, I made, I actually made my own tailpipes. Actually, I made the whole works uh, because they don't make anything for this other than making it. You know, there again, I'm going to talk about price. Um, they wanted $1,500 to do the exhaust on this car. That's from the headers all the way to the back. I just scrounged through my own private parts, found a bunch of pipes that looked like I might be able to weld them together to make it work. And that's exactly what I did. So I got about a hundred bucks in this exhaust system. Uh, nope, and I and I got about sixty dollars worth of mufflers, new mufflers. So I got one hundred and sixty dollars worth of, of uh, money in this exhaust system from front to back, and it's real nice. It, it's uh, the tailpipes are chrome plated, the uh, extension sticking on the back are chrome plated. So now you are looking at our custom aspect from the rear. Uh, and the question about this was we never really knew if he got the, if Dick got this all done Dick built all this Custom work back here, and it's pretty awesome the way he did it He had like 61 Pontiac Tempest taillights, but I don't think he finished the rest of this And I've, I've seen this before In the custom world back in the 60s. I hate to give away my age, but I was a young guy then and so I thought if I ever have a chance to build this type of a setup, I'm going to do it. The LED lights are a nice touch. As I stated when we first started this deal back in episode one, that I was just going to make a nice light that would just glow in through that opening, and I think we've accomplished that. That's the tail light. Now, there won't be any brake light in here. The brake light will be just on the two big lights on the outside. That's just a tail light. And so I think it's just a really nice custom touch. Hi, I'm Tom Gergen. I'm doing the upholstery on the Jewel. And today I'm putting a headliner in. So, picked out all the bows and got them in the right order. And we're about to put the headliner in. So, it'll be pull it in the center, front to back, and then right to left, pull it tight and a little steam, but like heat here and there. And it should come out with no wrinkles. And to heat up these stiff lines that they send you from the factory that don't sit well. I'm going to try to put these to lay down. <clears throat> 
so we can tire up with the inside of this trunk. Yeah. I gotta fix the gas pedal. Well, I need to lift it up a little bit. What we are doing right now is color sanding this car. And don't let anybody kid you. Nobody in this day and age can paint a base coat, clear coat, and make it really nice. Well, I suppose there's somebody out there that can, without buffing it. And in order to make it, well, I'll show you. In order to make it really good, you gotta get rid of that orange peel. And if Mike the Greek can get it in the light just right, you should be able to see it. Let that dry. There it is. See all them little spots look like a little alligator skin? See that? That is orange peel. And you gotta sand that out to get a nice, nice finish. And this takes time, so something you just don't want to get in a hurry about. Now I'm starting out with 1,000 grit paper, and then I'm gonna to go to 1,200 grit paper, and then I'm gonna to go to, to uh, 1,500. Now some people actually go to 2,000, but I'm not gonna do that because I have faith that my buffer will buff that out. And if you're gonna do this to your car, which you can, and you'd be surprised how beautiful it would come out once you get it color sanded and buffed. Only do one panel at a time. In other words, do the trunk lid, then do the hood, then do the door. Do not do a little bit here and a little bit there. It's much more difficult to do it that way. Because this way you can be sure this one panel is done by doing just this panel, you can make sure this panel is done and then you can move on to your next panel. Now you want to make sure when you do this, you clean this off and you look for any little bumpy nodules in the paint because you want to sand those out. Now this car has got four coats of clear on it, which is a lot. And I specifically asked painter Rick to do that to give me plenty of clear that I can sand this down aggressively that when I buff it out, it'll come out in the first buff. See, now look right there. Look real close right there. See that little bump right there? You gotta sand that out. That's a little piece of dirt, and you can. And that'll disappear if you give it a good little sand about like that. Wipe it off, let it dry a minute, and it should come right back out Moral of this story is to take your time and just keep sanding. And just about the time you think you're done, you're not. The smoother you can get it with finer paper, the less buffing you have to do. Because buffing is a, is a hard, hard task master. Now you've got to be careful when you sand that you don't sand real close to your edges. You can do that with 1500, but do not do it with 1000 because that round edge creates a little friction a little faster and you sand a little faster. You don't want to, you don't want to get too close to that edge. You want to sand it with something like 1500 and then you really got to be careful dumping it. That sort of thing you can do. Now look right here. See that? See that little bump right there? We got to take that out. So. And that's what you do. You go back and you sand that stuff out. The only thing I can add is that, thank God there's not as much dirt on the sides as there is on the top. Thank God for that.